Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I want to share with you the process that I used to create this miniature kneeler or prédieu. The Cricut Maker was used to cut out all of the shapes from chipboard and cardstock. If you'd like to make one too, the SVG bundle is available for purchase. There's a link in the description. Cut the files from one 12 by 12 inch sheet of lightweight chipboard and one 12 by 12 inch sheet of regular cardstock. I'll be using two separate adhesives for this process. First, Zig two-way glue for the laminating and then hardening all of the pieces with Starbond Superfast Thin. Now, as always, when working with super glue, it's extremely important to understand and follow the necessary safety precautions. All right, let's get on with this build. A cheap page protector is a great way to store all of your cut pieces. This build begins with the support structure and that consists of all of the chipboard pieces. The sides of the piece are created from four layers on each side, the top back, and the bottom back, these decorative apron pieces here, the shelves and a single riser, and the kneeler and the top of the desk. The layers of cardstock will be added to the exterior for added strength and decoration. The process of where each of these decorative panels is to be placed is gone over in detail. I just love these medieval motifs. Oh, and I'm hanging on to these offcuts. You never know when they're going to come in handy. Let's begin by laminating the four layers required for each of the side panels. I'm using Zig two-way glue for this because it's easy to work with. I love the fact that it's in a pen form and because it allows me to have just enough working time that I can sort of slide the pieces into place. This helps me to align the construction slots and tabs. Just that little bit of working time makes all the difference. Okay, so here are the first two layers complete. And I'm going to turn the piece over and examine it from both sides. This helps me to maintain greater accuracy. Sometimes things are revealed when you flip the piece over that you didn't see from the front side. I'm adding another layer of Zig glue. And then I'll be placing the third piece of chipboard right on top, adding more glue, and finishing the process off by adding the fourth and final panel on the very top. Again, being very careful to align all of the construction slots. Now I'll just repeat the process with the four remaining panels and then place one, two, three blocks on top and allow them to cure. Next up, I'm going to join together these simple panels designed for the kneeling area and for the desk top. Two panels are laminated together, aligned as closely as possible, and this results in two panels that will be installed at the top and the bottom of the piece. Next, I'm moving on to the lower shelf. This is the deeper of the two shelves on the unit. This is the upper shelf. The shapes here are quite simple, but it's still very important to keep the alignment as close to perfect as is possible. These two small rectangles get glued back to back and they will serve the purpose of acting as a riser. These decorative aprons will be installed on the front of the piece at the edge of the desktop and just below the kneeling platform. The large arch shapes with the repeating pattern at the bottom edge 
are glued together in order to create the upper back of the piece. Here's where the few seconds of working time that the zig glue has to offer really come in handy. I'm struggling a bit with this one trying to make certain that I get all of those fiddly bits aligned as closely to perfectly as possible. This rectangle with the arch cut into the center of it forms the back lower part of the piece. I know it's confusing right now, but it won't be in just a minute when we begin to assemble everything. For now, just make sure that all the pieces are tightly laminated and that you weight them down and allow them to cure. Now it's time to transform all of this cheap chipboard into wood. I mean, it isn't actually wood, but it's so close you won't know the difference by the time we're finished. The key to this is using super glue, and I spread it around the surface using an old gift card, and I just have this little clip on the card to make it easy to pick up. To begin the process, I add a bead of super glue along all of the exposed edges of the laminated panels. And I deal with any drips by just rubbing them into the surface with the plastic gift card. I harden all of the edges of these critical pieces before moving on to hardening both sides of both pieces. It's important to note that I'm working on a non-stick Teflon craft sheet. This makes it possible to not worry about whether or not some of the super glue actually drips down onto the work surface. I'll be able to peel away these pieces no matter how much glue has escaped. The hardening process is applied to all of the pieces of chipboard on both sides. You can safely ignore the cardstock pieces for now. We'll be dealing with those in a separate operation. Once all of the chipboard pieces have been hardened and they've cured, and that won't take very long, it's just a matter of minutes, you'll find that parts of the surface feel a bit rough. I deal with this by using all kinds of sanding implements, everything from sponges to emery boards to metal files, and I neaten up the surfaces of all of the pieces. I pay particular attention to the edges of these thick side pieces because I want to minimize the visible striations. And I'm also using a little handheld rotary tool here to help with the curvy bits. Okay, now it's time to assemble. The tabs at the edge of this rectangle fit neatly into the slots of the upright. Fit them together and apply a bead of super glue while pressing downward. Repeat that process for the arched upper piece and then install the two panels, one for the desktop and one for the kneeling platform. Once all of those are in place, take the other side piece and align all of the tabs with the construction slots. Add a dab of glue into each of the apertures and smooth it out with your plastic gift card. Within a matter of moments, the piece will be sturdy enough to handle without any worry at all. Now that the main structure is complete, we can turn our attention to adding the shelves. This larger shelf fits neatly onto a little platform just above the kneeling area. A dab of super glue on each side will hold it firmly in place. The rectangle piece acts as a riser and joins both the kneeler with the bottom of the shelf that we just installed. The smaller shelf fits neatly above the desktop, again on a little flat platform. There. Now, if you wanted to keep it simple, you could leave it like that. But 
I wanted to have lots of gothic detail on this piece and so these little apron pieces were designed to fit right there at the front of the kneeler and they're being held in place with super glue and the other apron panel slots right onto the front of the desktop. Now it's time to deal with the cardstock. This will create decorative patterns on the exterior while also covering up all of the construction slots. I'm using Zig two-way glue to apply each piece of cardstock separately, one at a time. If you prefer, you could laminate them together into double thickness layers before applying them to the surface of the piece. I decided to go a single layer at a time for this particular build because there are some odd spaces that I have to press these thin pieces of cardstock into and it's just easier working with single layers. This clay shaper tool is really coming in handy to help press the cardstock down and make sure that the adhesion is really firm. I just love the dimensional decorative edge that these overlay pieces give. Adding the second layer of overlay onto the upper back of the piece. Yep, I'm really loving the way this looks. It's time to finish off the back. Don't be concerned about exposed glue in the areas where the cutouts reveal some stickiness here that will be eliminated by the next phase of the process. So for now, just concentrate on making sure that your overlay panels are in place. I'm really appreciating the extra working time that the liquid Zig glue is giving me so that I can match up all of these fiddly bits. Not only does the cardstock serve the purpose of disguising the construction and adding decoration, it of course is adding to the overall strength of the piece. And that's just going to increase as we apply the same hardening technique to all of the exposed cardstock. Again, just add a little bit at a time and smear it around the surface working it in with your gift card. I chose to work with craft colored cardstock for this build. I really like the way that even without additional finishes, once we've added the super glue, it resembles wood. Yep, I'm just loving that. And I'm coming back in with all of the sanding implements to do a final cleanup. As a finishing touch, I'll be adding metallic, metallic wax into all of the recesses created by the overlay panels. I'm applying it just using small scale bristle brushes. The wax covers up all of the exposed adhesive in these areas. And by the time the wax cures, there won't be any stickiness whatsoever. And that's it for the main build. If you'd like to add the miniature open Bible, please download a free copy of this printable from the linked blog post below. This miniature book is not going to be functional. 
it will be fixed in an open position. But I've given you several design options when it comes to the exposed pages here. This is the cover and it measures one and three quarter inches by one inch high. I then cut a piece of lightweight chipboard to match those dimensions exactly. For the pages of the book, I'm using the spine of a perfect bound magazine and then transferring the dimensions of the cover onto this piece of magazine spine. Now it takes some doing, but after a few minutes of hard cutting work, I cut all the way through this old architectural digest and have a chunky little miniature book already. I use sandpaper to help smooth out the edges of the pages and then I cut off the excess in the other direction. Now the book is still really, really thick at this point. It's not the right size for the cover that is provided. So in order to make them fit together, I'll be reducing that thickness. For now though, I'm going to concentrate on making sure I get the edges of the pages as neat as I can by sanding them. That'll do. Okay, you can see here, it's still way too large for the cover. And we can take care of that by sort of nibbling away at the width of this book by tearing off little chunks of the pages at a time until it becomes the right dimension. That's better. Now I want to prepare the chipboard to act as the bookboard for this little faux book. I'm just dabbing some of the same metallic wax onto the raw chipboard so that any edges that are seen by the viewer will at least have a bit of metallic gleam. I'm using a bone folder to add creases to the edges of the spine and to help create that characteristic arc to the back of the spine. There, that's going to do nicely. Now it's time to fix the book in the open position. So I'm stretching this apart, almost breaking the back of that magazine binding so that it more comfortably will lie flat. I'm using super glue to glue the book pages onto the book board and to fix the pages in the open position. A single coat of cheap acrylic craft paint helps get rid of all the modern typography. And I dress up the edges of the pages with more of the metallic wax. The illuminated pages can now be added to the open center of the book. There. I just love making tiny books. Yep this one's going to do very nicely. Now to make the little pillow for the kneeling area, I'm using this beautiful Gothic detail stamp by Michelle Ward. And with it, I'm creating heat embossed fabric. Now there's a whole tutorial available about this process. If you're interested, I'll make sure that there's a link in the description so you can watch that video. I love creating embossed fabric. Now I'm just cutting this to size, placing the fabric right sides together, and then doing my best to stitch up three of the edges. This leaves the fourth edge free so I can stuff my little pillow. I used coconut fibers in mine. Oh, and these tweezers really help to pull a tiny piece like this inside out. And a ball stylus helps to press the corners into place. Once you've stuffed your pillow, just use a whip stitch to close that open end. This beautiful Gothic miniature is now suitable for the vanished inhabitant of the abandoned boudoir diorama. 
one imagines her lost in private devotions. At least this way she can contemplate the divine in style. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.